and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. I'm your host, Eric Fisher. This is the show where I talk to the people behind the productivity. This week, I'm sharing a conversation with you that I had with Natalie Beauchamp. She's a chiropractor, a former professional bodybuilder, a wellness consultant, a speaker, an author, radio, TV personality. She's got her own podcast. She's got a brand new book out called Hack Your Health Habits, Simple Action-Driven Natural Health Solutions for People on the Go. So that's exactly what we talk about in this conversation. We talk about priming your morning. We talk about eating for energy and having better focus. We talk about the importance of sleep. We touch on supporting your adrenals and energy management being more important than time management. This is a broad hacking your health overview conversation. We've touched on some of these subjects before in depth. In fact, we will do so again in the future. But for now, enjoy this conversation with Natalie Beauchamp. Well, this weekend is my privilege to welcome to the show Natalie Beauchamp. Natalie, welcome to the show. Awesome. I'm so excited to be to be on your show. So we've talked about health in a number of different, you know, fringe type of topics. You know, we've talked about sleep. We've talked about energy. We've talked about time. We've talked about a lot of different things. But I wanted to come and do an update on that. And, and what better way than to bring you and talk about health hacks? Give me a little bit of a background here for people who may not know you what is your area of expertise and and you know why do we need to come up with these health hacks? Well, thank you so much. Um, I just published a book about two or three months ago, and I've been in practice for 23 years. I'm in Ottawa, Canada, and um, I listened to patients for 23 years, and I listened to their struggles and you know the questions they had. So I decided to put a book together. I did not know it was going to be uh, a 600 pages book, but I just kept adding and adding because I, like I said, I had a good, good pulse on the problems that people or the challenges that people were experiencing. So uh, my goal was twofold with the book is to give people the information, kind of cut to the chase, what's important for you to know, because I realize people don't have time to go read 12 books on 12 different topics. And then the second component, which is the hacking part, is that I did not want people just to read the book and then not uh, act upon what they learn. So that hacking component is, you know, you're in the world of, of social media and so forth. Hacking is basically, by definition, a shortcut for a better way to to do things. We're used to it from a, from a computer kind of, kind of thing, but it works as well for health. So I wanted people to hack their habits because if we don't change our habits, things won't get implemented. So my goal was really twofold to give the knowledge and then help people hack their habits and implement that. So that was kind of the, the reason I wrote the book. Sometimes people hear that word hack and they think, oh, like you said, they think of it, oh, that's a cheat. That's a that's mm-hmm. not really doing the work. But it's not really about that, right? Hacking is not about uh, cheating and bypassing, putting in the the actual work. It's instead kind of finding a way to, uh, you know, like you said, a shortcut. If there's a shortcut, if there's an actual shortcut, you know, to get from one place to another that's faster – and is still legitimately traveling, you know, it's a secret route that nobody knows. Like, why wouldn't you want to share that? Exactly, exactly. So it, it's funny, because I was just doing a book signing this weekend. And, and I can see, uh, you know, when people glance over the cover, especially men, they think almost it's a computer book. And, you know, they read the rest and they go, oh, it's about it's about health. And, and you're right, I know myself, you know, and we're all busy. Uh, so if I can find a more efficient way to do something, I'm in. So that's, you know, to me is a, is a no brainer as a, as a strategy. So let's get into this a bit in terms of these hacks. So I, I, you, I mean, again, you've got personal experience with this. You've been talking with your patients and your clients and you're healing your, well, you're, you are healing them, but you're also hearing them and yeah. you're hearing their problems and their pain points. So. What are some of the most common pain points in people's lives when it comes to their health? Well, I think the first one is not setting time for themselves, especially in the morning. So they rush and they're behind the eight ball, like from from the get go. So I in the book talk about our personal prime time. 
And that is setting up some time in the morning to get organized and centered. So it could be, you know, a combination of things depending on the time that you have. So sometime I have an hour, sometime I might just have 20 minutes. But I try to incorporate a physical component. Great if I have time for a quick uh, hit workout. I try to also incorporate um, a mental development kind of thing. So either reading, listening to, um, you know, an Uh, a podcast or something that I'm going to learn. And then the emotional component, which can be, again, reading or meditating. And I think, like I said, depending on the time that I have, you know, I'll do different things. And that could uh, include uh, proper nutrition and so forth. So I give tons of example of, you know, it doesn't always have to be exactly the same routine every day, because let's face it, sometime you need to be out the door faster than other days. But if you try to what I call set the stage every day uh, and do that personal prime time, it just, I know myself, if I don't do it, I feel off that day. My nutrition is off, my focus is off and so forth. So I find that's probably the best hack uh, people can do. And for many, it means getting up maybe 20 or 30 minutes earlier every day and going to bed earlier. (laughs) So you're not, you know, you talked about sleep earlier. I'm not promoting here to cut on sleep. On the contrary, sleep is so important. But it's maybe, you know, switching your schedule around and, you know, taking off that half an hour at night of watching TV and putting it in the morning when nobody's is up in your house. So you have time to yourself. I know that personal prime time has really made a huge difference in my own productivity and focus and and energy. Like I said, you just feel ready to embrace the day and and prepare for it. So I would say this is probably the biggest thing people can do. And if it's not every day, okay. And it's, you know, it's about implementing maybe one day a week, two days a week and three days. And then it becomes a habit and you make it work uh, during your day. Yeah, I want to talk about sleep a little bit more, but I, I want to keep talking about this this thing in the morning where basically we're setting ourselves up for the day that we're not, you know, reaching from our bed for our phone and and already, you know, quote on for the day because I just yeah. I've yeah. done I, I'll be honest, I confess I've done that. It's never good for me. I try to make sure that my phone is uh, on the other side of the room. Uh, when I'm sleeping, and 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 honestly, some people say you should not even have it in the bedroom. I was just going to say you, you should not even have it in the room uh, <laughs> technically, and we should be turning off even our our Wi-Fi overnight. There's a whole section in my book on electromagnetic field and how it affects us on a cellular level. But that's you know, and it can affect your sleep. So yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, it's going to be, you know, different for different people. We've talked about morning routines, but, uh, you know, just as a quick primer there, like, again, it's all about picking and choosing and going with whatever uh, circumstantial or context it is best for you, you know, about how much time do you have on mm-hmm. which days, what things are most energizing or um priming the pump for you personally yeah. for the day. Um, some For some people, and I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm not going to say – Nobody should do any work first thing in the morning because some of these parents, like the best thing they can do because they've got little kids, if they're Mm going to work on something, like the best thing they can do is maybe Mm -hmm. get up so early with a cup of coffee and knock out a bunch of stuff for like Mm -hmm. an hour to an hour or two hours as long Mm -hmm. as they're going to bed early. Right. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And and you're right. The personal prime time can be. Uh, You know, like you said, everybody's got a different routine. Maybe it's later on in the morning. Maybe it's closer to lunchtime. But I find that if we wait too long during the day, let's face it, emails come in and we just get busy and we don't do it. One thing that I would like to add is I think people have to switch their mindset that, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym because I don't have an hour or whatever. I kind of joke with patients uh, looking at them with a straight face and I say, do you own a floor? And they'll look at me kind of funny. I'm like, I'm not serious. If you own a floor, you can pretty much do a full body uh, workout in 15 minutes and you're good to go. So, you know, we forget that we can be very efficient with our time and it's going to give us really good 
benefits when it comes to 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 help just before this podcast i just knock out a 30 minute hit training and i'm you know good to go because 30 minutes is is plenty and that was part of i was finishing my my morning routine and same thing with meditation there's tons of great apps out there now that are anywhere from five to ten minutes so just you know pause recharge breathe focus and you can do that you know pretty quickly so i think switching that mindset that if you don't have you know time to go for an hour class at the gym or or go work out or whatever you can still do some physical activity and same thing you know for eating maybe it's a it's a smoothie that you do in the morning that doesn't take too long but then you've got your physical need for the day uh, ready to go and um, you know you've planned ahead for the rest of your day so I think taking it in small little chunks I think is is really valuable and you feel good about yourself because you've done something uh, it just doesn't have to be for hours I do want to come back to eating and fueling yourself you know to have energy and focus but first let's talk about sleep that kind of comes in as one other component of being able to get up early or get up with any yeah. energy at all is not yeah. staying up till, you know, super yeah. late again. That, I mean, and one of the things if you, I mean, there are different types of people. There are the, you know, the night owls or the morning people, mm-hmm. etc. So, you know, getting up when getting up, let me, let me rephrase, going to sleep and getting up at the right times, mostly mm-hmm. keeping in mind that you allow for the, the correct amount of sleep the, and not just correct amount, but also quality, right? Oh, exactly. I think you are correct that some people are different than others with their circadian rhythm. And you do have to keep that in in, in mind. I know I have some personal friends that for the life of them, they tried that five o'clock uh, or that 5 a.m. Uh, morning club and they're, it's just it's not working for them. So I truly believe that there is no one size fits all when it comes to health. So you kind of have to, you know, work uh, around that. But I think the big problems and I think there's more awareness to it now when you have um, uh, people that are, you know, uh, celebrities and high profile people talking about their burnouts and how they neglected uh, sleep. And now they completely changed their their life around. Um, I think there's that uh, we glorify running on adrenaline and not sleeping because you're busy, you're efficient and so forth. So I think we, again, it's a bit of a switch in mindset that guess what? If you do sleep your seven or eight hours, you're going to be just so much more productive that at the end of the day, I'm sure if we were to tally your productivity, you're going to be more productive if you're well rested. So sleep, to me, if somebody asks me what is the most important thing people can do to for their health, it's not the fancy whatever uh, diet. It's not the fancy workout. It is truly, truly sleep. Compare it to a cell phone. I mean, we recharge our cell phone at night. Well, our body needs to recharge at night as well. So uh, again, if somebody's not sleeping while doing a crazy early morning workout, half asleep and all tired, <laughs> not, not too smart, right? So you've got to work with your lifestyle and where you're at and some people have no problem sleeping they hit the pillow they get up you know seven eight hours later they're good to go great but i think uh stats wise it's um it's one third of north americans who suffer from uh insomnia so that's a pretty high stat uh so we need to address the sleep uh from the get-go and that is making sure that you're disconnecting hours before you go to bed it is using um blue uh blue glasses for you not to be affected by the light it is not having your cell phone uh just by your bed and some even sleep with uh, the cell phone under their pillow because it's tracking their sleep not a big fan of that it's having that downtime that ritual uh, at night for you to really unwind otherwise you're running on adrenaline you may fall asleep but the cortisol is going to peak, you know, at two or three in the morning. And that brings me to another hack. Uh, it's to hack our adrenals because we really want to support 
our adrenals. Uh, a lot of people are suffering from adrenal fatigue, and that is um, affecting their sleep and then just a, a consequence of you know other health issues uh, or, or a domino effect of other health issues that um, will arrive. I know personally for me, when I, you know, occasionally something happens and I get knocked out of my sleep and I get like a five or six hour sleep night, I mm -hmm. am pretty ineffective comparatively mm -hmm. to the other days where mm -hmm. I get that, you know, that seven to eight hours mm -hmm. and it's, it's noticeable. It's a noticeable difference. And, and I think that lack of sleep, I, I like that you say that it's the most important thing because it, it affects the other things. Like if you've got exactly. enough sleep, yeah, I mean, you could be eating super healthy, but if you're not getting enough sleep, then the nutrients aren't necessarily doing as much of a, of a job one, but two, you're also, if you're lacking sleep, you're going to be semi, you know, drunk in a sense, the yeah. equivalent of it. Right. I've heard this, yeah. that, you know, so then you're going to make, you're going to make less smart decisions when it comes to your diet. You'll just yeah. eat anything that's that's crap that's in front of you to make you feel yeah. good because you feel bad all day because you're tired. But also, yeah. you're not going to go work out either and do any physical activity because you're tired. Yeah, and it becomes a vicious cycle. And and to add to this, it is uh, no, a known fact that people who don't sleep will often uh, be you know uh, awake, like I said, because their cortisol is pike is, is spiking, and then they're going to go downstairs to eat because their glucose level is just dipped down very low, and they're eating more, and then they're gaining weight, and they're more fatigued, and the adrenals are you know tapping and disturbing their sex hormones. So now they're having hot flashes, and it's not really hot flashes; it's adrenal fatigue. So you are correct to say that it affects everything, and. Um, I do um, know that I've read somewhere that um, being sleep deprived can be as dangerous as literally being drunk in terms of our uh, acuity uh, and focus uh, in decision making. So it is it is to be taken seriously for sure. Now, can you explain a little bit more on what specifically the adrenals are for, for anybody who, who's not, I mean, we've, I've, I've heard that word and I feel like I know what that is, yeah. but I want to get a little bit more of a, a clarity on the understanding of what that word is and how it affects you. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's such a powerful thing. And it's, it, like I said, there's more awareness to it now, but the adrenals are basically two little glands sitting at the top of our kidneys and they're responsible for, um, you know, some, some sex hormone production, but for our stress hormones. So we're talking about, uh, cortisol, uh, which, you know, cortisol, if we're constantly in that state of, uh, fight or flight, then the cortisol is, either, uh, you know, spiking when it's not supposed to, or we become, um, we suffer from adrenal fatigue. There are three different phases of fatigue. The first one is just the body saying, oh boy, wait a minute here, uh, little body, you need to slow down. I'm having a hard time catching up. The second phase, the body is trying to compensate even more. So now, it's um, reaching another system to try to support you. And in the third phase, this is where people are really exhausted. When we do a four-point cortisol test on these people, it's almost like a flat line here. Um, and the adrenals are important to many, many um, other hormones in the body. So we really want to nurture those adrenal. And it's very typical, again, that go-go lifestyle that we have, especially, let's say, as young parents, you know, uh, going full throttle with kids and your career, go, 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 the adrenals are tapped out. And then you arrive in your 40s and 50s, um, where, you know, for women, it's, it's, you know, the change in life. And then, you know, menopause hits like crazy because your adrenals are tapped out. And now they can't uh, step in and produce that estrogen and progesterone that your, you know, your reproductive organs are product uh, are producing less. So it has a slew of consequences for the body. Uh, so nurturing our adrenal is key, and sleep is probably one of the best things that you can do to make sure that your adrenals um, are, you know, not tapped out, and obviously controlling your your stress as well. Uh, if you're constantly, like I said, in that fight or flight kind of mode, your body is okay 
for short periods of time, but not for long periods of time, because it's kind of that our autonomic nervous system has this parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest, and sympathetic, which is the fight or flight. And it's the yin and the yang. We need to be in both for different things throughout the day. For instance, if you eat food, your body is going to be stressed in in bracket here, uh, digesting the food that you ate. But it's a good stress because you are getting nutrition out of the food that you're eating. But like I said, when we become what's called sympathetic dominant, then we have imbalance. uh, And for long periods of time, it really can create, um, you know, havoc on your health. I know that I've experienced uh, not drastic, like the lowest, lowest levels, but I've, you know, been out of whack with food and um, sleep before and really been out of whack and and basically just trying to compensate by drinking lots of coffee and keeping, <laughs> which is just, which is basically just making it worse, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes, you know, stuff happens and you need to deal with, it could be a uh, a sickness, an accident, uh, you know, life happens. Uh, I'm not oblivious to that fact. But if you're, you know, it's kind of that 80-20 rule that if you're doing the right things 80% of the time, while the other 20 won't impact you as much and you'll be able to bounce back uh, way easier and better when things don't go the way that they should, right? Yeah, exactly. So if we're if we're getting enough sleep, if we're taking care of ourselves to where our adrenals aren't going crazy and we are being w- uh, aware of our morning time and starting our days right so that we're not, you know, falling into panic mode immediately first thing in the morning, um yeah. in order to support all those things or to uh incorporate even more energy and fuel into all those things, obviously, here's where food comes into the mix. Yeah. And uh, thank you for bringing this up, because I think it ties right into what we're talking about here. Um, So the body, I think people have to understand that the body uses two sources of fuel, glucose and ketones. Uh, glucose, I think everybody knows what that is, but ketones, and you may have heard about the ketogenic diet and so forth, but ketones are basically a byproduct uh, of our fat being broken down and uh, the source of energy coming from our fat. Now, the issue with this is that we're eating so often and giving our body glucose on such a consistent level that we're never really tapping into our fat for storage. And from a brain point of view, and obviously you need you need your your fuel to the brain to think, is that we have not trained our body to use our fat storage um, for fuel. Now, where it becomes a problem is that glucose is sort of a dirty fuel. And I give the example of a fireplace, the, the real thing with wood. It gets dirty. It gets messy. It does the job, but it gets messy. I give the analogy of a natural gas fireplace for ketones, much more efficient. It doesn't um, get dirty. It's, it's clean. It's, you know, it's, it's a really uh, clean source of heat because, you know, it's, it's, it's used um, without making a mess kind of thing. So in our, our body, when we use glucose as fuel, we create more inflammation. And we now know that chronic inflammation is basically all the lifestyle diseases that people are experiencing. So it's it's the diabetes, it's the uh, heart diseases, it's the it's the cancer, it's uh, you know many of the chronic illnesses that uh, we're suffering from now. So using ketone as fuel or training our body to use ketone as fuel, I think is a long-term, good, efficient way to not burn those glucose and not create inflammation. But, you know, the body has to be trained to do that. Now, a lot of time people will say, Natalie, what do you think of the ketogenic diet and this diet? I always say it depends. I My answer to everything is it depends. Because like I mentioned earlier, there's no one size fits all for you know anything that when it comes to diet or exercise or or anything like that so you have to figure out what works for you um so maybe the ketogenic diet is right for you maybe it's the adapted ketogenic diet maybe it's just plain and simple cutting your um your sugar overall because we know it creates inflammation 
So eating for energy is eating to use the proper fuel and have that clarity of mind and that focus. And once once you learn how to tap in the proper um, resources uh, when it comes to the fuel resources, I think it can make such a big difference for people. I think that regardless of you know keto or keto, ketones being a, a thing that someone somebody would go for diet wise i use diet in, in air quotes there mm-hmm. yeah. um i think we can all agree though that eliminating as much of a crash and burn quick you know fire and then it's gone and dirty glucose mm-hmm. as fuel yeah. is definitely still something we all could do yeah Exactly, exactly. And now, you know, we talk about inflammation, dimension, Alzheimer, you know, has been linked to uh, inflammation of the brain. So our diet is, it, you know, it, it sounds so cliche to when we hear you are what you eat, and you're like, yeah, 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 I know that. No, 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 I'm serious. You know, <laughs> our food has this much power uh, on our health. And I think it's not just about, you know, weight loss. It's not just about, you know, having the ideal weight. It's to decrease that chronic inflammation in our body. So we don't suffer down the road with illnesses that we know are lifestyle uh, diseases. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, uh, you know, and I, I have been, I have a friend who he is, he is eating, um, he, he, he has adopted the, well, actually, I know a number of people actually who've, who've done the keto or a modified keto, but m- yeah. the majority of the, again, the majority of the change really comes down to eliminating sugar. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I just, I, I mean, I'm not, fully quote keto <laughs> but yeah. i am eating more clean things and more protein and more um vegetables and all of that and and definitely more active and feel like being more active because of that but i yeah. again the the not having a crash of yeah. like quick panic burn energy and then crash over and over again uh yeah. because of the the sugar the glucose yeah no you're right and and that's why you know, I'm never a big fan of, you know, again, uh, air quotes uh, on, on that too, of, of specific diet and be, uh, you know, so, so regimented with, oh, this is the only way that everyone should eat. No, everybody's got different needs. And my question to you is, when you eat that way, how is your energy? How is your focus? If you feel better, then you know this way of eating is, you know, most likely a good option for you. So people have to think, when I eat, do I crash after? Well, if you do, check what you ate and when you ate it, and you need to start analyzing things. So like I said, there's no one size fits all, and you have to do what is right for you. Uh, I mean, there's tons of parameters that you can get uh, tested through an integrated uh, natural health practitioners and so forth. I mean, it depends how much you want to dig and measure uh, all those parameters to make sure that you're not in a state of inflammation. Yeah. Well, and I know that you talk about the fact that you believe energy management is more important than time management. And, you know, Mm -hmm. when it comes to time management, that could be, you know, how efficient you are at doing things, how great you are at being on top of your calendar and scheduling the right actions Mm -hmm. and all of that. But like, if you have no energy, even if you've made the right decisions towards what you have to do and when you need to do it and all of that stuff, having no energy means you're not going to want to do it or you're going to take longer to do it or worse. You won't do it at all. Yeah, exactly. And energy management to me is twofold, your your physical energy. So like you said, if someone knows, like I know myself, I love writing in the morning. I'm just so productive. So my energy management throughout the day, I go, where are my peak times? I know where my peak times are. So I place activities that require a lot of my attention at those times because I know that I'm going to be more productive. Uh, But it's also energy as in having Having the right fuel, um, and there's many strategy to to do that. But I think it has to be the focus of our day to make sure that we're fueling our body to perform at its best. And like I said, sometimes it's easier said than done. Uh, you know, some days you're like, "What the heck happened today?" Right? <laughs> uh, it happens. But the, you know, I always say, as human beings, we're 
so lucky because we can choose to act completely different day the next day. We have that new day, new start. And, you know, if you fell off the wagon or whatever, well, guess what? Tomorrow is a new day. You can start fresh right here, right then. And I think, you know, starting with a clean slate every morning is a pretty neat thing to have available to us instead of beating yourself up on what you did two days ago or didn't do two days ago. New day, new choices. We have the opportunity to make different choices. So how cool is that? It's great. And and again, I can attest to as you make the right decisions more often, that mm-hmm. momentum kind of picks up that even if you lose a little bit of it because you made a mistake or you fell off and whatever, like tomorrow or even later today, like you yeah. still make the right decision. Yeah. Natalie, it's been awesome talking with you. I would love to direct people to one, your podcast, as well as your book and have people, if they want to dive deeper into any of these topics that we talked about today, uh, be able to do that with you. Awesome. So the name of the book is called Hack Your Health Habit. A mouthful for a francophone, uh, Canadian francophone. I chose all H's. Uh, but uh, people can purchase the book on Amazon. It's in Barnes and Nobles because I know your listeners are probably more in the States. Um, and it's available in the physical, uh, as a physical copy or on Kindle. Uh, so hack your health habits. And then my podcast is called the What the Hack podcast. And I interview people, you know, anything related with health that, uh, you know, what the heck is going on with that topic, because I, I am still learning every day. And I love to have people in the natural health, uh, you know, arena, teaching me some stuff. So I'm really always looking for new ways to look at things, new research and new ways to hack our bodies, basically. And brain. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. And we definitely need that. So I will link up in the show notes for this episode, the book, the podcast, your site. And uh, Natalie, thank you so much for being here. It was great talking with you. Thank you for having me on. Well, that's it for another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. Thanks for listening. Thanks again to Natalie for talking with me about these health hacks. It's always great to have a reminder and say, you know what? Maybe my sleep's been off. Maybe my eating and my diet has been off. Maybe I've been trying to push too hard first thing in the morning and I need to relax a little bit. To be honest, I've found that I don't like hitting the ground running first thing, which is why I actually go walking. (laughs) I actually get up and go and physically become active first in a uh, way I listen to podcasts. And so I'm I'm waking up, I'm hydrating, I'm physically moving a bit without pushing myself too hard. And then that way, that's out of the way. And I feel like I've had some me time with a podcast. And then when I come back, I do some other quick little things and I do some work hours before taking my kids to school, depending upon what day it is, etc. So, yeah. And I get up early for that, which means I get to sleep early to make all of that happen, like we talked about. And well, one of the things that I use to get better sleep is brain.fm. Just figured I'd throw that out there again for you. Uh, you can check it out and get 20% off your first year if you go to beyondthetodolist.com slash brain FM. A lot of you have tried it out and told me you're loving it. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and share it with someone you know needs to hear it. You can find the show notes for this episode at beyondthetodolist.com slash 262. And with that, I will see you next episode. <laughs>